all my stitchy friends how is everybody doing today is tuesday april 9th 2024 and this is floss tube number 11. you have stumbled upon the runner stitcher my name is andrew and this is my channel where i talk about all of things cross stitch related to my journey um i also throw in a little bit of running sometimes um, i don't have any running today just just stitching but um, yeah, mix of running and cross stitch. So if you are new here, welcome. I'm so glad you found my channel. I hope you like what you see. And if you're returning and back for more, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. Um, you guys have been awesome during this whole journey. And I'm I'm so glad I started a floss tube so I could share all of this with everybody. <laughs> that makes it so much more fun, right? Um, <clears throat> I wanted to start off by just saying a huge thank you to everyone. We've now hit 3,000 subscribers. <laughs> I am still floored. Um, when I started this channel, I really thought like, maybe I'll get 100 or 200 people to, to see my first video and to, <laughs> to start following me. So 3,000 is just a number I can't even comprehend, <laughs> honestly. But it's awesome. I've, I've loved the friends I've made along the way and I just love interacting with all of you through the comments and hearing what you're working on and especially I love all the feedback and input that you have given me. I wouldn't be able to make some of these choices without you all. <laughs> so really appreciate that. And just wanted to say a huge thank you. So to celebrate 3000 subscribers, um, I am going to do a giveaway probably towards the end of this video. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in maybe winning a few things. <laughs> So that is the only order of business today, I think. And since I don't have any running, oh, I did want to say, I feel like a lot has happened since the last time I spoke with you. Easter happened, which was a lot of fun. We had some friends over the Saturday before Easter for just a little get together. And we did a little adult Easter egg hunt kind of thing. And yeah, it, we just had a good time. Um, we did a tea and had a bunch of little kind of finger foods to go with it so yeah it was a lot of fun it was also the day after Beyonce's new album came out Cowboy Carter and so we had that kind of going on repeat in the background so it was kind of a celebration of the new album and Easter and tea and all things good food and yeah we just had a really good time it was nice so if you celebrate it if you celebrate Easter I hope you had a lovely one and spent some time with family and friends and I hope you enjoyed the maybe the extra time off work or, or things of that nature. The next thing that happened was we had an earthquake here in New York. <laughs> that is, I think, the, only the second earthquake that I've experienced since I've been living here. And I think they said it was a 4.8 on the scale. It, the center of it was in New Jersey, so they definitely felt it more than we did here in the city. But I was sitting here at my desk working and all of a sudden my chair started rumbling and I was so confused at what was going on and Winston woke up from his nap and came out from under his blanket like, what is happening, Dad? And at first I thought that they're doing construction down the street and I thought like maybe they had demolished one of the buildings and just caused this rumbling <laughs> sensation. But um, yeah, then my boyfriend texted me and he's from his work, which is downtown, and he's like, did you feel that? <laughs> so then I knew it was, was something else. But as far as I know, everyone and everything was okay. Um, I don't think there was any damage done. We were all fine and safe. Thank you to those of you who checked in on me to see how I was doing after that. I appreciate that. And yeah, we were we were all good. It just was kind of shook up the day a little bit. So that happened. And then yesterday we had the solar eclipse happen. <laughs> so there's just been a lot going on. Winston and I took a little walk um, during the peak time when the eclipse was happening. and. Here in the city, I think we were at like maybe 90% is what we were slated to see. Unfortunately, it was a cloudy day, so it really just looked like the sun was behind the clouds. But one thing I will say is it did get a little bit darker during that period of time. Not dark like nighttime, but more dusk. And the temperature really dropped. That's what I was most surprised about. It felt colder for those like 20 minutes when it was happening. <laughs> um, but it was, yeah, it was a cool experience. So Winston and I had a good time. I'll try to put some pictures here so you can see. But there were a lot of people I know in the U.S. who got really good views of the, the total eclipse and had 100%, you know, viewing capacity. So, yeah, it was it was fun. 
I don't know if you can hear that rumbling, but it's the construction next door. <laughs> I apologize if you can't. Hopefully they'll stop soon. So yeah, those are all the things that have happened uh, since the last time we spoke. A lot going on. I, since I don't have any running to talk about today, I, I am sort of getting back into a running routine. I kind of took some time off and wasn't really running as much, but I've been trying to get back into a routine now, and I think training will start for my next big race probably in June, so I've got some time, but I do want to kind of keep getting out there so I don't lose what I've got. <laughs> so, okay, so let's just jump into the Stitching Men, shall we? So... This week I have two new starts, and you sort of already know what they are because they're both my WIPGO calls for April. And the first one I'm going to show you is my Beyonce piece. <laughs> How fitting since the album just came out that I'm now getting to work on this project. So this is Beyonce at the Grammys 2017 from Tilt and Crafts. I started this on March 31st. However, I had a very minimal start. I basically just wanted to get some stitches in so I could get it orient, um, oriented and then hit the ground running in April. So I'm not counting those few stitches uh, towards my WIPGO call since technically it was in March. But since April, uh, sorry, I, I put a total of 1,336 stitches in and that puts me at 1.1%. Since April, I put in 1,250 stitches. So my WIPGO goal was 3,000 stitches for the month, and I realized that is going to take a lot of time. It's going to be tough to get to that. I know I already have 1,250 stitches in, but it was tough to get to that number because I'm doing this one over one on 25 count black Lugana, and it's just a slow process. So yeah, so I'll show you what I've got now. A reminder, this is 1,300 stitches, and here's what we have. So this, I'm starting in the very center of the pattern because I am hoping I can only, I'm hoping I can only have to do her sort of body and her person here, that I don't have to do the, the background. And yeah, these are the tiny, tiny little stitches. Sorry for the threads here. They are going to get cut. I'm just waiting for them to kind of be secured in the back. But... This, this project has been a lot of fun, partially because I've been able to work on it while listening to the album. So I, I just love that Whipgo called this project for the month that the album basically came out, <laughs> which was a lot of fun. And yeah, I, I am enjoying it. I, I really like the colors and, and the blending already that I'm seeing. And I, I think it's going to be fun. Obviously, you can't see anything yet, right? This just looks like some stitches, some blobs on a black canvas. But I am excited to start seeing it come together. So I've got, yeah, if I can get it done, which hopefully I will this month, I've got like 1,800 more stitches to do. So I'm hoping that that will allow at least some shape to sort of take form. I think that I'm working on, it's like the center of her body and maybe even like her right chest <laughs> is what this is going to be. So, yeah, I've been, I've been doing this where I'm basically taking one color and starting with it in here with, I think I've got one 10 by 10 square fully complete in here, but I've been choosing a color from that square and then just traveling it as far as it goes now that I've got like a bunch of stitches in here. So I'm going to keep going with that method. I think... I think it kind of works for my brain that I can do cross country and sort of get stitches in without having to worry about stopping and starting to change colors because there's a lot of confetti in here, especially since I'm starting in the middle of the pattern. It's a lot of confetti and yeah, I think this method just works for me. So what I'm doing now is since I finished this square right here, I think I'm going to focus on the square. I think it's this direction next. So I'm just picking a color from in here and then kind of run, running with it wherever it takes me. So you can see like some of the stitches I got way down here. Some of them are just in this little section here, but they are tiny, tiny stitches you can see. I don't know how well that's showing up actually. Maybe if I put my hand there. Tiny, tiny little stitches, but yeah, it's been fun. So this is my new start. Obviously this is gonna take 
a long, long time. This is another huge project that eventually maybe it'll get completed, but this many stitches puts me at 1.1%. So got a ways to go, <laughs> but I am enjoying it. So that is the first start. Okay, the second start is my second WIPCO call. Both WIPCO calls this month were new starts for me, which I shared last time. So this is Santa 1992 by the Prairie Schooler. And I started this on April 1st, and I've got about 1,547 stitches in, which puts me at 69.7%. Now my WIPCO call for the month is to finish this, so I think I'll be able to do this one <laughs> for sure. I only have 30% more to go and yeah, this one will for sure be finished. But when I first looked at my WIPCO calls, I was like, ugh, did I, did I bite off more than I can chew kind of situation? Because I think the Prairie Schooler Santa is about 2,500 stitches. And then once I saw how slowly the Beyonce piece was taking and I had called for 3,000 stitches, it just got me worried. So those two have been kind of my main focus for this first part of April, because I, I at least want to complete the Santa and I know that I've got a lot of work to do in Beyonce to get to that 3000 level. So some of my other projects this month might not get as much attention. But anyway, so Prairie Schooler Santa 1992, here is where I'm at. So you can see I'm working on the bottom half and I know you're thinking like, is there more stitching up here? I can't see it. This is where I kind of stopped. So I don't have his head or his beard or anything above here yet. So I started in the center and then I've just been working um, down to the bottom. And I didn't take this out of my Q-snap, I'm sorry, because I still have a few of the border stitches to finish here and I've got his uh, walking stick here to finish. And I've also got a few more stitches in the little uh, fishing rod or fishing things here. But I am loving this. Now you will see, if you look at the pattern picture and what I've stitched, it does look, the colors look very different. Um, in the pattern, this looks very yellow. This is more of like a tan color, actually, in his, his coat. I, I like these colors better, to be honest, but I was surprised when I was stitching it and saw how different, how much darker it actually was in the pattern than what was on the picture, anyway. This, I'm stitching on, this is two over one on a, an 18 count Ada uh, Western cloth, I think was the, either the color or maybe that's the name of the fabric. I'm not entirely sure. I got this on a Facebook de-stash group and was able to cut off this piece that I still have some extra of this cloth, but this size piece worked perfectly. So, but the, the two over one stitching, I am loving and look how cute the stitches look. <laughs> I, not to toot my own horn, but these stitches look so good, I think. And I've never had a piece where I was like so excited about seeing my stitches come together. Yoshi and I were talking the other day and he posted a picture of one of his projects that he's working on. And I told him, your stitches are so squeezable. They're just so cute and fluffy and they look so squeezable. <laughs> and I, I really, as this piece started coming together, I was like, oh my goodness, my stitches are kind of squeezable. <laughs> so here's um, some squeezable stitches, if you will. But I was just really happy with that. And I, I love how this is coming together. So I definitely see the appeal of these Prairie Schooler Santas. And, you know, I don't have any other ones in my stash, and but maybe someday I'll stitch other ones. This one is a gift for someone, so this will not be mine to keep, which I'm really excited to have like stitches that I'm very proud of in a, in a gift to someone. So yeah, we'll see if I get up any more Prairie Schooler Santas, but that is my start for this one. So hopefully next time, my next video, this will be a finish and I'll be able to check this off my whip go goals, but <laughs> okay. All right, so those are the only two starts I've had. So let's go ahead and jump into my whips. Whips are works in progress, and these are projects that I had previously started and now put some more attention into. So 
One of the salves that I started, you know that I'm doing two. One of them is the Slumber Party Salve from Sewing Starfish. And last time you saw this, I had finished most of the border and wanted to get that done before the motifs start coming out. So this time, and sorry, I've got a hanging thread here, but this time I worked on the top right hand corner of the border. So I put in some different color stitches here. I added like some of this background, um, the top of the border here. And then I went through and added some of these to the bottom of the, the roof of this little house thing. And I had, I also did finish the actual border. So I think last time I had some stitches left to do here maybe, but it is done now. And yeah, so I'm just working on this. The, the first motif comes out on April 19th. So I don't know where that motif is gonna go in this piece. I mean, obviously it'll go somewhere down here because <laughs> this is all the border up top. But yeah, I am just gonna pull this out when I can and keep working on some of the border. Maybe I'll fill in more of what's down here on this side of the border and see how far I can get before the first motif is released. But once the motifs are released, I am trying to keep up with this one. So I'll kind of just do the border as, as I can, but my main focus will be on filling in the motifs in this, this piece here. So this is done on a 18 count black Ada and I'm stitching this two over one. And yeah, again, I am really excited. Uh, I think my stitches look pretty good here. If you can see pretty clearly, I think they're, I'm really happy with them. I will say that because it's on black, the, the little fibers of the thread show up everywhere on the fabric. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out a way to, here's the one right there, um, a way to kind of stop that. I did order some thread magic that I think might help the thread just kind of slide through the fabric better. We'll see. Um, I think it might come tomorrow, but I'm going to try that and just see how that works. But I still am really happy with this piece and I'm excited to, to see it get started. So if you want to join along on this sal, uh, I'll have the info down in the link below to her Etsy shop where you can join in on the fun. It, I think it's going to be a lot of fun motifs. This is the Slumber Party Sal by Sewing Starfish. So some progress is progress, right? I think I'm about... 39.1% done with the border. Obviously we have none of the inside motifs yet, so I don't know the full percentage, but just of the border itself, I'm about 40% done, which I'm happy with to have that amount done before the sal even starts. I can always get to the border, you know, throughout the sal. Okay, so my next whip is Woodland Enchantress. This is a dimensions kit. This is what she's gonna look like here. And you've seen this before, so you know what she looks like. This time I worked on it just for one day. So I, I dedicated one whole day to Woodland Enchantress since the last time you've seen me. And I was able to put in 673 stitches, which put me at 16.7%. The reason I was able to get so many in is they are half stitches. So technically it's not that much, <laughs> but I'm still counting it. <laughs> and here's where I am now. So this time I was able to extend the blue out a lot further over here. So I filled in all this darker blue color in this side of the tree and then kind of ran with it over here to the other side. So this will, I'm still in the background, but I did reach a point, I think maybe over here where these stitches are next to her hair. <laughs> and that was exciting for me because that means I'm getting closer to her, which obviously is the focal point of the piece, but I really do love the look of this. Um, I'm still, every time I pull it out, I'm like, wow, this looks so good. These dimensions and with the half stitches, it, it looks really cool. So I am enjoying this and I'm really glad I, I am spending some time to get this back out and work on it and make some progress on it. So I'll explain a little bit more what I'm doing in plans later that why this came back out, but happy it did. So. <laughs> Okay, so my next whip, you've seen this the last couple of videos, is my black chihuahua pattern, which I got from Puntago Petite Patterns on Etsy. 
and I have had a few people reach out and I think one user actually told me that that shop was able to make a custom chart of their pet as well. So definitely check them out if you are interested in stitching your pet or, or just pets in general. They've got a lot of dogs already pre-charted, like the one I did of Winston. So it's, this one is not a custom piece. This one was already on their site. But they have a lot there, and, and they are really good. So again, I'm making this for my previous roommate, who loves Winston as much as I do. So this will be a gift as well. And I won't be keeping this one, but I am falling in love with it. <laughs> so maybe eventually I'll have to stitch it again. But uh, I, I really am liking it. So my goal for this was to each, between each video, to put in 20% of the project. Last time I was at 60% and I'm happy to say I've done that. So I put 897 stitches in since the last time and I'm at 80.9%. This is stitch two over one on a 20 count from Stash. The fabric is called Cali. And here's where it is now. Ooh, he's looking so cute. And he looks just like Winston. I, I really love it. So I filled in a lot more of the darker color here in the in his body and a little bit here in the legs. So I've got the his front paws to go. I think there's a few more stitches right in through here. And then I do have a lot of fill in in his face and kind of in this section here of colors that I didn't have in my stash. I kitted this up from, I don't know if you remember, but when I was in Florida, my aunt gave me a bunch of her extra stash and I kitted everything that I've done so far from her stash <laughs> which was really cool but there were some colors that she didn't have that I needed to buy so I do finally have those I was able to get them from 123 stitch so I've got everything now I think hopefully I'm not missing any colors but I so now I can go back through and kind of fill in those colors that are, are here which will give it even more definition to his his face but yeah I'm really happy with how this is coming out I I hope my previous roommate will love it as well, but this is the uh, Winston lookalike pattern. <laughs> so, very cool. Okay, what do we got next? So next up is Lily of the Woods by Mirabilia. Here is what she's gonna look like. She's so pretty. Ooh. I'm excited for her so yeah so that's what she will look like let me grab the scroll rod she's the only one I can't prepare in advance because she's on this big scroll rod which I am loving stitching her on this so it just will be a little cumbersome to show you guys <laughs> but here she is now in all her glory so spring has finally come for Lily. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw some of the, the blossoms here on the branches that I put in, but I was able to finish. So this whole section up here, the branches and the blossoms from like here up, that is totally completed. All the stitching, all the back stitching is done. And the only thing left to do is there are a lot of beads up there. So I have to decide do I want to do the beading for that section now or should I finish all the stitching in the whole piece and then come back and bead from top to bottom? Let me know if you have any opinions to that, whether you bead sort of as you go, especially on a scroll rod or if you do, if you still finish all the stitching first. But I put about 513 stitches in, so she's now at 40.8%. But it was slow going. I, I worked on her for two full days and I'm not kidding you, there are so many colors in these blossoms. I think I counted there's like six, six or seven different flower colors in here. I know it's probably hard to see on the camera, but there's even a blended one. So there's a blended like pink and white um, stitch that it's called for. And just because I didn't want to travel too much and there's just pockets of color everywhere. So I was constantly stopping and starting the thread and and then there were these two pockets over here. And then with the back stitching, I was trying to figure out like how to do it so that it looked okay and looked nice. So honestly, not my favorite part of the pattern. <laughs> I, I still love Lily, but uh, I was also telling Yoshi, I, I, I'm sort of ready for a break from these blossoms because it's a total different style of stitching than when you're doing like a big piece of the pillow here or, you know, her dress where there's like big blocks of color. 
So I, I do love the the result. Like I think this looks beautiful, and I'm so it was really fun because the the blossoms are blooming on along the river where I usually go for my morning run. They've started blooming, and they're white and pink blossoms. And so finally making spring come for her while the, it's coming for me too was I just loved it. It was like I was bringing her to life while things were coming to life for me. So it was fun, but not enjoyable, if that makes sense. <laughs> the bad part is, what I realized is like, so I was so happy to finish this section, right? To get that off my list. Then I realized there are a lot of branches and blossoms over here and under this like draping fabric. And there's a few more over here, but most of them are on this side. And I was like, ugh. So now I'm kind of dreading that part, which I shouldn't be dreading it because it, I'll get it done. It won't be bad, but yeah, just not as enjoyable as I was expecting. <laughs> so I also did put a few more stitches into the fabric here. So some of this lighter blue color here I brought down in the fabric. And I think that's the next part I will work on because that is more chunks of color. And I think that will bring some life back to this and help me realize like, oh, she is enjoyable to stitch again. <laughs> so I'll probably keep working on this blue fabric here. And uh, eventually I do want to start working on the wings more because I think that will add a different um, element to her to how she looks but yeah I'm really happy with this so again Yoshi and I are stitching this for the first Mirasal hashtag first Mirasal and join in if you are stitching your first Mira if you're stitching Lily if you're still stitching your first Nora Corbett feel free to join in if it's your first Mira of the year or yeah just join in and we'd love to see your progress but make sure you tag us so we can actually see what's going on <laughs> but yeah so this was Lily Happy to get some more progress on her. All right. And, okay, I've got two more. So I've worked on a lot of different projects. Even though I put most of my time into the Santa and Beyonce, I did work on a lot of projects. So the next two you've also seen recently. This is, the next one is the Pixel Dragon Adventure Sal from Flossy Fox Shop. This is my daily weekday thread. So in the mornings I grab a thread for the next color and stitch it until that thread is gone. If that color, if there's enough in that color. I'm stitching this for hashtag year of the dragon sal hosted by Erica Fibers and Floss Canada is her YouTube or her floss tube channel. And Samantha, hers is the Hika Stitcher. They started this hashtag on February 10th and I've got lots of dragons in this piece, so I'm stitching along and hoping to finish it by the end of the lunar lunar year. So I have now, I also posted this on Instagram, so you may have seen this too, but I have now completed part three. So on my Instagram post, I had just completed this little green dragon here, but now I've added those little mushrooms. And so part three is fully complete, <clears throat> which means I think I'm about 50% done. So I should be able to, now that the whole pattern is released, I should be able to put that into Markup RxP, and next time I'll know exactly the percentage that I am once I start working on the, the final sections. So there's two more sections here and then one here, so it'll be like a, a rectangle. But look how cute this little green dragon is and his little mushrooms. The next part I'm really excited about because there's, there's like a rat with cheese here, <laughs> and I cannot wait to stitch that, so that'll be fun. But. I put in a total of 527 stitches, and yeah, I'm really loving how this is coming out. Actually, this green is looking pretty true to what it is in person. It's so hard to to take a picture of because the stitches are so tiny. So this is a, ooh, what is this, 20, 28 count? I think this is a 28 count, green apple, Lugana, but I'm stitching it one over one. And then all the outlines of the dragons, so the dragons are all outlined in a color, the outline I'm stitching two over one, which I think really just makes the dragons kind of pop a little bit more on the piece. And I'm glad I didn't stitch the whole piece two over one because that would have been way too much thread in those tiny holes. <laughs> but yeah, super cute. So I'm excited to keep making progress on this slowly but surely. Eventually it'll get to a finish. <laughs> All right, and my final whip for this video is Saga from Long Dog Samplers. Again, this was my leap day start, so I'm hoping to finish this by 2028. My goal is to stitch on this on Thursdays, and I have a weekly goal of 550 stitches. 
I think that will get me through to the to finish it in 2028 <laughs> I think if I did the math right so this time there were two Thursdays since our last video and I've put in 1141 stitches and I'm now at 3.8 percent in this piece and so I don't know how many of you are familiar with Saga probably most of you are but they also provide the stories of what you're stitching under the arches so there's a whole PDF that lists like the 27 stories or however many there are and so you can kind of read the story of what you're stitching under each arch so the first arch that I'm stitching is on the all the way to the right hand side and so I, I want to just read an ex excerpt from the story that they have posted um, in case some of you don't know but this one is called the speckled hens and there's a quote and it says contented speckled hens industriously scratching for the rarely found corn may sometimes do more for a sick heart than a grave of nightingales there is something irresistibly calming in the unsentimental cheeriness of top knotted pullets <laughs> therefore th this is so that was the quote and then they have a little section here and says therefore fear not and take solace from the fact that doris and dorcas the humble spotted hens of saga are there simply to bestow the peace and tranquility that only this scene can impart. So breathe, chill, and relax. <laughs> I thought this was really cool because, so my mom mom's name on my dad's side was Dorcas. So I kind of love the fact that these hens are here and they're supposed to bring sort of peace and tranquility as you watch them and stitch the piece and that one of them is named after my mom mom. And so now whenever I pull this piece out, I think of her and of her like kind of watching down on me and just giving me peace as I stitch this piece. That might sound weird, but she also lived on a farm. My mom and pop up and they had chickens and um, we had many farm fresh eggs on the farm. So I, I do sort of, yeah, I just love that little connection for me personally. But here is where I am now. I'm not going to show you the whole thing because you've already seen the border and I only stitched in this one section, but here are the speckled hens. <laughs> so I think the last time I had all these trees stitched from this little forest up here. And now I continued the arch down and around and stitched the two hens, which they are so cute. Look at them. Oh my goodness. I just love them. And then I stitched this little part down here, which is I think the bottom of the arch. So this first arch I think is now fully completed. Like I think this is the bottom of it. So now I need to decide where I'll head next. I don't know if I'll keep working my way over this way or or how I'll go. Probably I'll keep going that way. Anyway, I, I really like how this looks. Again, I'm stitching this with uh, Silks For You PR207. It's very, very lightly variegated, so you can sort of see there's some lighter colors in there that show up better in person, but it, it's very subtle, so I don't have to worry about the variegation but I, I love how it looks and this is on a 36 count vintage country mocha also look at this cute little butterfly here and I think this is like maybe a dragonfly <laughs> I did the back stitching sort of as I went because I was like I'm not gonna come back and, and do all the back stitching so it is very minimal I think it'll be fine but exciting to have one of the arches completed. Now the arches do get bigger the further they go south, so the top row of arches is the smallest, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm 3% in and I have a whole speckled hen arch completed, so I'm very happy. But that is my progress on Saga. All right, and now you've seen all my whips for the two weeks. So I think I put about 8,000 stitches in since the last time you saw me, which is a good amount, and I'm happy with the progress. So uh, a little bit about plans. So I mentioned this briefly with Woodland Enchantress, but I'm trying out a rotation this month, and I'm calling it my 543 rotation. And that is where I'm picking a project and giving one po project five days, another one four days, and another one three days throughout the month. To kind of see so so I can have some focus pieces where I'm dedicating time to them to see how much progress I can make so that I can start getting ahead with them and I can pick a piece that maybe I haven't picked up in a while and, and dedicate some days to it but I don't really want it to be a focus piece where it takes up most of the month so I figured a 543 rotation 
that will still, I think that's only 12 days, right? So I still have the rest of the month to choose whatever I want to be stitching on. And anyway, so I'm, I'm just trying it out now to see how it goes. And it also sort of gives me a, a goal so I can check off, you know, how many days I've done on this one. <laughs> I, I love check boxes. So now I've got, you know, my Saga goal every Thursday. I've got this rotation goal for the month of April. I've got my Whipco goals. And that feels like a good amount of goals to have for the month for my stitching. So the five day project I chose for this month is Lily of the Woods. And I think so far I've put two days into her. Again, not much stitching because those blossoms were not so fun. <laughs> the four day project I've got, I just dedicated that to Saga this month because I knew I had a lot with my Whipco calls anyway. So there are four Thursdays in April. And so Saga will be my four day project. And then my three day project is Woodland Enchantress. So you saw I got one day in, which means I'll have two more days on that project for the rest of the month. So we'll see. I'm going to try 543 for a month or two and see how it goes and how I like it. But I kind of like the idea of it. And maybe to pick the projects that get assigned to the days, maybe I'll use a random generator at some point. So far, I've just been kind of picking them. So that's part of my the rest of my plans for April. Also, obviously, Whipgo. So I've got to finish the Santa, which I think I can and will soon. And then I've got to dedicate a lot of time to the Beyonce piece because 3,000 stitches is going to be tough. I think if anything else, if I don't finish it this, this month and I don't meet the Whipgo goal, that's fine. <laughs> but if, it, if nothing else, it taught me, you know, maybe on a piece like that where I'm stitching on black, it's a small stitch. It's full coverage with a lot of confetti maybe my Whipco goal should be less, like 1,000 or 1,500. Even maybe 2,000 would be more achievable. Three just seems like a lot on this piece, so hopefully I'll get to it. But, And then my other goal for the month is I would like to try to finish the Chihuahua piece. You know, my goal was 20% between each video. I'm at 80 now, so obviously that would put me at 100. I want to at least finish all the stitching in the body of the Chihuahua. There, there was some wording at the bottom of it. I think it said Chihuahua Mom, maybe. I'm not stitching that. I still need to decide if I want to stitch Winston's name underneath or, or if I want to put anything or just leave it as the picture. But So maybe that part I won't decide yet, but at least all the stitching in the pattern I want to get completed by the end of April. So maybe the next time you see me, I'll have two finishes, <laughs> which would be awesome because I feel like I've been starting a lot and uh, it's good to also get some things finished. But... Okay, so let's do, why not let's do the giveaway now. So as a thank you for all of you for liking, subscribing, commenting, and just really accepting me into this community, I, I want to do this giveaway for reaching 3,000 subscribers. Again, my mind is just blown. I, I can't believe I'm at that level. I, I love it. I love the interaction. And honestly, for me, it's it's not about the numbers. It never really was. I, I like the idea of having a video blog of, of my journey. The fact that people are, are joining me on this just makes it even more enjoyable, but it's it's never really been about the numbers, but it is fun to reach these milestones and kind of see, you know, how big this community actually is. So anyway, enough of me blabbering. <laughs> Let's get to the giveaway. So I've got four items this time. I was only going to do three, then I decided I'm going to add one more. You'll see why at the end. But so for the for the giveaway, Please don't mention giveaway or free or anything like that in the comments. Please be 18 years of age or older because I will need to ask for your address to send the item to you. Please be subscribed subscribe to the channel. And the giveaways are not affiliated, affiliated with YouTube at all and there is no monetary value. So if they do get lost in the mail, unfortunately I've only got this copy so I won't be able to replace anything. But um, hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> so now that we got all that out of the way, let's start with the first giveaway. So. First up is Angel of Summer. This is by Lavender and Lace. And she's just beautiful. And I figured with summer coming up, maybe somebody would like to to stitch on this one. I've got this in my stash as well. Somehow I ended up with a second copy. And so I would like to give this to one of you. So if you're interested in Angel of Summer by Lavender and Lace, use the keyword summer in your comment below. She's really pretty and they have one for each season. So you can get all four seasons if you're interested. And typically I don't, I don't really have a desire to stitch angels, but for some reason these lavender and lace ones, they're really pretty to me. And I, I love how she's got this little uh, dove here at the end. Anyway, 
Angel of Summer, if you're interested, keyword summer. Okay, the next one, and this is kind of funny because I just watched Cross Stitch the Globe's latest floss tube and they did a giveaway as well. They're giving away the same pattern, <laughs> which I just think is so funny. But so if, if you want to double your chances <laughs> or if you don't win it from them and want to win it from me, <laughs> let me know. But this is Three for Tea by Mirabilia. And again, I just think this is so beautiful. I don't know when I would have time to stitch it at the moment, which is why I'm giving it up and want to pass it along to one of you. But I, I love the colors in these dresses and ladies having tea while stitching. That sounds perfect. <laughs> They're not stitching in the picture, but just having tea. So three for tea by Mirabilia. If you're interested in this one, the keyword is tea. My third giveaway is fabric. So this is it's 13 inches by 16 inches, and this is called Acid Goth. It's a 32 count linen, and it is by Starlight Alchemy. So this is the piece, and it's opalescent. It is so pretty. Now, it is dark, so it would be hard to like, it might be hard to stitch on, I'm not sure, but it's really pretty. I couldn't think of anything to stitch on it for myself, but I know there are people out there who would be able to come up with brilliant ideas to stitch this, to stitch on this. Again, it's uh, 13 by 16 inches and it's a 32 count linen. So if you are interested in acid goth, then comment the keyword below acid. <laughs> and there's no pressure to stitch on it, but if you do get this, I want to know what you're stitching and I want to see progress. <laughs> That's just me personally, but no pressure. You don't have to. So. That is the fabric giveaway. And those are the three that I was gonna give, but then I decided, you know what? I'm gonna do one more, and I am going to give away the 1992 Prairie Schooler Santa. So I'm almost done stitching this, and the pattern is on the back of this card, so I can't show you the back, but I wanna pass the stash on this and give this away as well. So if you are interested in stitching Prairie Schooler Santa, with these cute little fishies, then comment Santa down below and I will happily pass this along to you. So that is the final giveaway. The only other thing I've got to discuss is haul and I actually don't have a lot for haul so you might be disappointed or you might be happy if you don't like haul. <laughs> but I, I have kitted up some things that I've got for future starts coming up so I, I just placed some orders through 123stitch and got the fabric and threads and floss that I need. So that's kind of been my main haul. Um, I am a part of the Stitch Me's Fabric of the Month. So I did receive that for this month. I do a 32 count linen, a fat quarter. This one is called Gold Rush. So I'm not gonna take it out of the packaging, but it looks really pretty. The modeling is, is great. I think it'll be a nice sort of neutral, but also with some, you know, some modeling to it. So. I love Be Stitch Me fabric, and I'm really happy that I joined the club. So that was part of my haul, but kind of. The next part, the next two things were, well, the next three things really were gifts. So my boyfriend gave me an Easter present, <laughs> and in the Easter present, he found these vintage magnets, um, Disney magnets. So he thought maybe I could turn these into needle minders, which I probably will at some point. So. Here is Donald, so cute. A member of the Mickey Mouse Club. How cute is that? This little vintage magnet. Then we've got Winnie the Pooh, so cute. And Mickey and Goofy. So I definitely will be turning those into needle minders and using those, but that was very thoughtful of him. Uh, I really appreciated it. The next thing that he gave me in the gift was a new teacup. So when we stitch, we've both kind of been into stitching and having tea, <laughs> as you do, right? I mean, isn't that what you're supposed to do? But so he got me a brand new teacup. The cool thing about this teacup is it is a pixelated cross stitch pattern on the teacup. How cute is that? And on the base, it's got like this sort of pattern as well. So not only is it super pretty, 
not only is it cross-stitch, but there's a pattern on the cup. And I was actually thinking, I bet I could just pick some colors for this and stitch the pattern that's on the teacup. <laughs> so maybe I'll do that. I've got some linen napkins that I want to try stitching on and maybe some of these patterns would be perfect for trying that out, stitching one of these little flowers on the napkin. And then I can use the napkin while I have the tea. It's perfect. <laughs> anyway, that was a lovely gift and I was really happy to receive it. So that was fun. The last gift I received was from my current roommate. His mom had some extra beads that he sent my way. So these, I don't know if you can see, they're so pretty. They're kind of like a rainbowy blue, but I'm sure I'll find a project to use for those. I've got more of these. These are like a darker kind of rainbowy. The shine isn't coming through quite as I expected, but they're really pretty. And then these like matte black beads. So I don't have a project in mind, but I'm so happy for these because now I can hopefully, you know, put them in to some projects. And is that it? I think that's all the haul. Yeah, that's all I got this time. Not, not too much. So anyway, that's all I've got for you. But if you keep running, if you're a runner, always keep stitching and be kind to whoever you meet on your journey. Bye for now. Until the next stitch. Thank you.